today we are going to learn opening principle and opening devices okay so let us go to the very first slide opening and cleaning as we have already discussed that cleaning is only possible when we have opened the tufts as told fibers arrive in a mill in a very compact bale form opening of the compact mass of fiber into smaller tufts and tufts to almost individual fibers is the very fast and foremost operation to be accomplished for transforming a bale of fibers into a yarn. So, we have to open the fibers, make it smaller and smaller, so that ultimately finally we have to go to the almost single fiber stage. Then only we will be able to accomplish transformation of a bale of fibers into a nice yarn. Impurities are also present in cotton especially being detrimental for machines life and ultimate yarn quality. Simultaneous cleaning along with opening is essential. For cleaning the prerequisite is opening so that the impurities are liberated for extraction. So, part of these things we have discussed in the previous uh, lecture. Now, let us come to let us come let us focus on the opening part. Let us say disintegration of bell. Bell is a huge mass of fibers very compact. Now, the procedure one could be removing individual fibers from the bale. This is the hypothetical situation. In the first case, if a bale has to be consumed in half an hour, considering it contains 50 billion fibers, 60 million fibers have to be removed in each second. As we have discussed or in the previous slide that ultimately we have to go to the single fiber stage of opening, then only we will be able to arrange the fibers in a very nice manner and we can make a yarn finally. So, can we really remove fibers one by one from a bale in one step? If that is what is plays in our mind, then what we need? We have to remove 60 million fibers. Part second, because we have to make a process which is commercially viable. Viable. This is something which is highly unrealistic and really not possible. And therefore, we have to reject some such idea that we will be able to remove one fiber from the bell and place it somewhere, then you remove another one fiber, place it somewhere like that. This kind of thinking is not really work. The other procedure could be dividing and subdividing the bale. It is also unrealistic to divide a 190 kg bale into half first that is 95 kg each and then into 4 47 5 kg and then 47 5 to another half. So, every time I am dividing a bale into half into half and half by half and half and half, this is also a very very lengthy process and therefore, not really very very uh, encouraging. So, the best way is to peel large clumps of fibers from the bale and progressively divide it into many smaller pieces. 
So, neither procedure 1 nor procedure 2 are very, very encouraging and the best way is to peel large clowns from a bale and then progressively divide it into many smaller pieces. So, we keep removing or peeling large clumps, not one clump, multiple clumps together from a bale and then from each clump we produce another multiple sub clumps like this. If we move then that is the best way to open the fibers. So, these integrating options therefore, we can have and also depicted in the figure. Option 1 is a large chunk of fiber is held and then small clumps of fibers are removed from main mass one after the other like this option 1. Option 2 is the mass of fiber is divided and redivided into smaller tufts as shown in the second diagram. So, initially I generate a large lump of clumps from each clump again I divide make it a large lump of clumps. So, this is 1, this is maybe 2, this is n, n could be 10, n could be 15 like that if we go. Then that is another option between these which option to be chosen. That question remains. There are three possible ways of top opening. We can think now a large top is divided into several smaller tufts, the total volume of which equals the volume of original top. This is how this is what also can take place. That is when a tuft is opened out, the volume of the, this big tuft is equal to the volume of these smaller tufts together. So, the capital V is equal to some total of small V i's. That is we have generated a large number of small tufts from one big tuft and the total volume has remained same. This could be one possible way in which opening can finally takes place. The other possible way is this is what can happen in actual practice. The opening up that is volume of a top increases without change in weight like this is the weight. You see compare between these two, this has this top is larger than this in terms of size. So, there is no change in weight, but there is it has not been divided into two parts also, only there is a increase in volume. That means, volume out is actually the signs will change, this should be greater than volume in. So, initial volume is less than the final volume. So, this is what is possible when you actually you know accomplish the objective of opening by a machine, this is what can finally happen. Because the opening process as we see afterwards this is a random phenomena. So, a big top is being acted by some opening elements and is getting divided into large number of smaller tufts and if we then compare what was before and what is afterwards, then we may see three different types of possibilities. So, this is one possibility as we discussed previously also one possibility, this is second possibility and this is the third possibility where a shape of tuft alters without any change in volume or weight. It is here only the shape has changed, this is only shape change, but no change in weight or volume. This also actually happens for many tufts. 
So, these are the three possible ways in which opening actually takes place. This is very fast, where really from one top you are generating multiple tops of different sizes and different shapes. This can also happen in some machines. Next is this one, where the top will only open out and the third one that could be change of shape. These are the three different possible phenomena which actually occurs when the machines will be acting on the tufts. Now, how to open tufts? The kind of mechanism which is used to open the tufts is by plucking, by tearing between oppositely moving spikes teasing up tufts in nip state by needles or saw teeth and tufts subjected to impact force in free flight or in nip state. This is the way the machines have been designed. There, these are the various actions which actually occur either plucking actions or tearing actions or teasing actions or an impact on the tops. And all of them finally results in some change in the volume or the weight or the shape of the tops. These are some of the opening devices which are used in the blow room machines you will come to know about them in more details. This is what is known as spike lattice that is this is a basically a kind of conveyor going like this and then there are spikes on it as shown here and they are used also in the in some machines. Then there is a device called gripping looks like this which are spring loaded. There are plakers like this then there is a rotating assembly you see we will discuss about them in some machines the more details called bladed bat bladed beaters there is a drum with short tooth on their surface this is a cylinder with needles on them these are the types of opening devices which are used for opening the tufts without damaging them now we will first take out this one, this is plucking out action. And on the plucking out, what we do? That there is a either there is rotating disc, it looks like this. These are the two rotating discs here as shown here, or you use forks and plucker. So, what happens here? Two rotating discs picks up fiber tufts from the bale surface. Like this is one disc, this is another disc, these are the two bales and from the as they rotate they pluck out the tufts of fibers from the bale and this is effective in both directions and once they are plucked out the tufts will go in these directions because there is immediate suction through which these plucked out tops are transported to the next machine. Or we can also use a fork or plucker where you see there are fingers like this, two spring system facing each other are dropped into the bale and then closed and lifted. So, it goes inside the bale, penetrates the bale in open state and then these fingers will close. So, it will grab the tuft and then it is lifted and then it is put on some conveyor. So, these actions is very gentle 
but produces lumps of uneven size. Whereas, in this case the, uh, the tufts which are removed through plucking actions using rotating disc are relatively more uniform in terms of their size, but the both of them are actually used in some machines. Then the tearing action which happens between the spikes. So, like shown here that there is a spike latticed basically a kind of conveyor or lattice we call it on the surface of it there are spikes like this, this these are the spikes. So, tufts are lifted these are the tufts they move forward like this directions. So, they are lifted and they are crossing this zone where there is an even a roller. So, here the tufts are acted by oppositely moving spikes and torn apart into two parts all these tufts here. As they are trying to cross this zone, there is a resistance offered by the Ebner roller which rotates in the opposite directions. And therefore, on the tufts there is a tearing actions. This action is generally mild in nature, so they do not damage the fibers, but tufts are then torn into two pieces or maybe multiple pieces also. Then there is impact by strike strikers like in this case what is shown here that flat or oval or round bars are riveted or screwed on the cylinder. In this case here various spacings of striker elements may be used. and this rotates in this directions from here we are feeding the tufts so as it rotates these elements will come and hit the tufts so there is a sudden impact force which will be acting on the tufts and the tufts will be broken into pieces and such kind of arrangements are there in uh, some opening devices or some opening or cleaning machines which have been designed. Now, if we look at this carefully, then we see that when such thing happens, the striking points are distributed the way it is shown here for every rotation the length of sheet which we delivered is let us say from is L and there are multiple striking elements which are there on the drum and therefore if we imagine it a sheet is being fed the striking points will be distributed in a random manner on the sheet and the length L is the length of the sheet which we feed per revolution of the beater. So, there is a sheet which is being fed, this sheet is basically made of tufts slowly and the beater is actually coming, the beating elements are coming and hitting them. So, for every revolution if we feed L, this is the way the depending upon the way the strikers are actually arranged on the surface of the beater, these are the various beating points on which the beating will take place and the tufts are going to be then broken into smaller pieces. Here the opening intensity depends upon the distance between the devices, the speed ratio and the number of striking elements how many striking elements are there on the surface of that cylinder or drum. Okay. The impact by bladed beaters. Now, here one typical diagram is shown here, this is a bladed beater something like the central shaft, we will discuss them in more details afterwards, 
So, there is a shaft on which these blades are mounted. The beater consists of two or three beater bars. So, this is a beater bar okay, arranged parallel to the supporting staff shaft and held by four or five cast iron arms. So, there are uh, like this bar is there and the bar is held by supporting shaft and as the bars as the, the, the center shaft rotates the bars will come and beat the fibers. In non rotation of it the feed sheet receives two or three blows across the full width of the machine. Like here it is being shown that is depending upon number of blades that we have like in this case there are three blades are there. So, if we feed a length L then this is the first beating, this is the second beating and this is the third beating because there are three beater bars. So, three beater bars in one revolution will make three beatings across the full width from here to there of the machine three times. So, if we feed only L, the L part of the sheet being fed will receive three blows from the beater. Now, it comes to teasing. Now, teasing is done with the help of a short tooth type of roller. A cylinder is filled with short tooth surface having finer spacing between the elements. A large number of teeth like this on the entire surface of the roller or on the drum. This is suitable for smaller flocks and it generates new surfaces. So, their opening intensity is quite high, much higher than the previous ones where we use bladed beaters. Spacing between the teeth is only 6 to 8.5 millimeter, tooth height is 4.5 to 5.5, turns are 6 to 8 turns per inch, speed is around this much 600 to 1000 rpm. So, these, these devices the you can say the intensity is much more than the previous ones and they are very effective when the tufts becomes very small in size. When the tuft become very small in size the bladed beaters will not be very very effective on them. So, as we will see that that on which type of machines what, what type of actions should be there. Teasing by tooth disc, this is a diagram for tooth disc. Tooth discs have triangular plucking elements as shown here. The discs are secured to a shaft with distant pieces. They are asymmetrically formed as they operate in one directions. So, they are inclined in one directions and they are also basically the action is teasing by tooth disc. So, there are large number of discs placed one after the other. This is the first disc, then there is second, then there is third, there is fourth like this and they are inclined in one directions. So, they also look like short tooth and they are also very, very effective when you want to deal with very small size tufts. The other teasing out is done by the help of needles where you see there is a central shaft and these are arms on which the pins mounted surface are there. These are the pins. So, similar to bladed beater, but instead of beater bars we have pin bars here. So, no more beater bars. The inclined pins penetrate the tufts 
and comb through the mat of fibers and therefore it can generate new surfaces. So therefore this kind of the opening device is also very effective for small size ducts because they can the it can comb through the uh, the ducts and open them out easily. Generally they are used in some machines we will see them uh, as we discuss the machines individually and the speed is between 800 to 900 rpm. The feed is with the help of a feed roller and with the help of a feed plate. So this is feed roller and this is feed plate. So like this we use them or it could be uh, pedal also. Now these are the different types of uh, opening devices which are used. So you see there are multiple types of devices which have been designed by the machine manufacturers and these devices are used in different cleaning machines. We will learn about them in more details in the next lectures. The, let us now discuss the intensity of the opening actions because if we want to compare between the different devices then we want to know okay, how do we assess the performance of these different opening devices this is one thing. The other thing is, is how to express the intensity of the opening actions by a given beater. So one is fiber mass per striker you have to calculate. It is defined as the amount of fiber mass per striker of a beater for a given production rate and beater speed. What we need to know how much fiber is there per striker this is what we need to know for a given production rate. So if P is the production rate n b is the beater speed and n is the number of strikers on it then the production rate in terms of milligram per hour is going to be p into 10 to the power 3 into 10 to the power 3. So kg converted to gram and gram converted to milligram and striker or striking per hour is the speed is 60, 60 into n b and n is the number of strikers that this particular beater has. So that is what is n and then intensity of opening will be a ratio of these two. So P into the power 6 divided by 60 into n B into capital N. This can be chosen as an intensity of opening which is I in this case. So that gives you some idea about the intensity of the opening actions by a particular type of opening device. The other could be blows per kg. How many blows are given to a kg of material? So wherever we have a beating device where there are blade type of beaters, bladed beaters like in this case this could be quite useful there and alternative to top size the number of blows per kg of cotton instead of expressing in terms of milligram per striking elements we can simply say blows per kg of cotton. So if nk is the blows per kg of cotton that is to be how many blows per hour blows per hour divided by production per hour. If we take the ratio of these two, this will give us the intensity of the opening actions. So this will be 60 into n b into n divided by p in kg per hour. The calculation does not take into account 
the effect of the setting between the beater and the feed roller. This is very important. Beater and grid bar and grid bar spacing beater to deflector plate. You will see that there are other uh, factors in a given machine which can also affect the intensity or the result of this opening action other than the speed and production. And one of the most important thing there is the, the setting between the striking element and the feed roller. This is very, very important and the intensity also depends upon this, but this does not come into the picture in this given calculations. But anyway, this is what is also used in the industry. The other third one could be beats per inch. It represents number of strikes by the beater when the sheet of fiber advances 1 inch. The more is the blows per inch, more waste is generated and more will be the cleaning actions. But excessive beating may cause fiber damage. So, these are the negative aspect of excessive beating actions. That means, if we go for very too much of beating, then obviously there is too much of mechanical stress which will be acting on the fibers and the fibers might get damaged. So, the intensity in this case is speed of the beater, number of blades on the beater divided by delivery of the feed roller. So, speed of beater, number of blades on the beater divided by circumference of the feed roller and speed of the feed roller. So, we can find out this intensity if we have these the values of these quantities with us. But typically the blows per inch varies between 30 to 50 in most of the uh, devices which are used in the blow room line. The shortcomings of these measures are none of these measures truly represent the degree of treatment this stock receives. The calculation does not take into account the setting distance between the feed roller and the beater. This is one thing which is missing. If the setting is closed, the fibers will receive harsh action and can damage fibers. So, this part is not coming into the, uh, the proposed you know, kind of intensity the measures that has been suggested, but even then this is what is used. If it is too wide, the treatment will be mild in nature as told earlier that the setting distance very is important. Closer setting means very intense opening action on them. If the setting is wide, the action is going to be mild in nature. So, that part is anyway, suppose if, the, if it is too wide, even though you rotate the beater at very high speed, still opening will not take place. So, that part has not come into all these uh, measures which have been suggested. With this, we close this session. Thank you.